A wicked problem refers to a type of problem impossible to solve and not suited for scientific solutions. As Riddle and Weber discussed in their seminal paper, the search for a scientific basis inevitably fails because of the wicked rather than tame nature of these problems. Wicked problems have no definite formulation, constantly evolve, and there is no correct solution. This is in contrast to tame problems that tend to be well-defined with solutions that are clearly correct. Examples of wicked problems often revolve around issues of social planning, including things like natural disasters, famine, disease, crime, and poverty. In responding to wicked problems, one of the main criticisms is the use of a scientific or rational approach designed for solving tame problems. For example, the four-phase idea model starts by clearly identifying the problem, gathering all of the information. Only then do you move to develop multiple solutions to compare and contrast. The third step is to execute the optimal solution. And finally, in the last step, you assess how well the solution actually worked. This is great for tame problems, for problems that remain stable, but it is not as useful for wicked dynamic problems. To paraphrase a quote by Daniel Yanklevich, the scientific approach focuses on what can easily be measured, and we tend to disregard what can't be easily measured. We then assume if something can't be measured, it must not be all that important, or even worse, we begin to act like things we can't measure don't even exist. Given the limitations of the scientific approach, the question becomes, how might we better address wicked problems? How can we shift from the laboratory mindset, using novice subjects to conduct highly controlled experiments, to an approach that looks at how experienced subjects actually try to resolve dynamic, uncertain problems in the real world? One alternative is to use a naturalistic approach responding to wicked problems with tools specifically designed to help navigate rather than solve a problem. Instead of a correct or optimal solution, a natural approach looks at making steady improvements that help a community learn how to manage a problem over time. This approach began in the early 1980s, studying how people make decisions under real-world conditions. This included military commanders, firefighters, nurses, pilots, and other professions that routinely deal with ill-structured, dynamic problems. And there are additional factors, such as vague goals, feedback loops, and not having any correct or predefined solutions, as well as dealing with the problem across multiple levels. As you can see, the naturalistic approach is focused on many of the same or similar characteristics present in wicked problems. And over several decades, the NDM community has developed a number of tools that have proven useful, from concept mapping to matrix games. Without describing each tool, the main takeaway here is that these tools were designed to explore natural dynamic environments. And this is very similar to what is needed when we try to respond to a wicked problem. The same way that wicked problems are dynamic and have no correct solution, NDM environments face similar challenges. In fact, it appears that the overlap between wicked problems and NDM is significant. Moving forward, there's a need to discover and develop better tools to help us navigate wicked problems. It doesn't necessarily mean favoring a naturalistic over a scientific approach. It only means recognizing what type of problem you're dealing with and then learning how to choose the right tool for the job.